Thank you. Put that there. Uh, when, I, when I wrote how the states got their shapes, uh, I was dealing with why the lines are where they are. Why is New York as opposed to what is New York? And in doing that, I encountered uh, stories of people who were involved in, in the why, but the book was unable to contain those stories. Uh, and so this book are, is a collection of, 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 of the people who I encountered and who I subsequently looked into uh, uh, that, uh, that, that created the lines. Uh, but both books are really seeking to answer uh, one question. Here's my little thing, which is, how did we get from this to this? Uh, and in this second book, some of the chapters deal with people who, not with these particular lines, but who tried to put more of these lines on the map but failed, or people who have tried and in some cases are currently trying to change uh, uh, some of those lines. Uh, if you all got a handout that should look very much like this, these are the names of the people that, that I looked into. A number of them I'll be talking about tonight, but I wanted you all to have a copy so that later when we do questions, it can maybe help formulate questions or help others follow uh, what you're talking about. Uh, uh, what intrigued me about all of these people, though, was that none of them, and in fact, as far as I know, no person ever, said when they were a kid, when I grow up, I want to establish a state line. Uh, uh, what, what I found was is that all of these people had a quest, their own personal quest, that somehow ended up impacting on where a line uh, is today. Um, if you look at these names or the names on your, on your handout, uh, you'll see that some of them are famous and some of them are not famous. And some of them you've heard of, but you don't really know why, nor did I. Uh, up, uh, up, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to make this point. Like, there we go, Daniel Webster up there at the top of Maine. What did he ever really do? He d debate the devil, you know? Uh, we, we don't, uh, most of us don't know. I didn't before I started. Uh, Stephen Douglas, uh, who was uh, in the middle of this map a number of times, uh, debated Abraham Lincoln, uh, what else? Uh, some of them are people that we've heard of, but I discovered that what I'd heard wasn't quite the whole story, or in some cases was simply wrong. Uh, if you look to uh, Rhode Island, you'll see Roger Williams. I was taught in school that Roger Williams founded Rhode Island to establish religious tolerance. True enough. What I didn't know was that he did it for religious reasons. He wasn't kicked out of the Massachusetts Bay Colony because he was some loosey-goosey liberal guy, but rather because he was too Puritan for the Puritans. Uh, uh, I'll give you a, a quick example, though there were other incidents uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, the, the, the colonial charter that created the colony begins with the words, Charles, by the grace of God, King of England, and Roger Williams said, how do we know he has the grace of God? Yeah, by Puritan precepts, one, we don't know who and who does not have the grace of God, and therefore, do we really have the right to take this land from these natives? And his fellow Puritans said, Roger, Roger, just, you know, because back home, that, you know, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't keep quiet, and eventually, things like that got him kicked out. Uh, another name that uh, uh, is very misunderstood, and, and I want to take a few moments to talk about it because it's a springboard to the larger issue I want to kind of follow in this discussion tonight, is uh, Mason and Dixon, you know, famous line that they have contributed to the map. The Mason and Dixon line, widely believed, is the separation of the free states from the slave states. Uh, absolutely incorrect. That's the Mason-Dixon line. It's not a line, it's three lines. Uh, it was uh, created by, uh, to, or surveyed by Mason and Dixon to, as best they could, mitigate conflicts in the colonial documents that created Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. Now, they don't quite know, but it could in fact be that the phrase Dixie comes from the name Jeremiah Dixon. But Jeremiah Dixon was not a Southerner. Jeremiah Dixon wasn't even an American. 
Mace, Charles, Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon were two very eminent British scientists. And to get Mason and Dixon to come over here to become surveyors of this line is the equivalent of getting Mozart to play at the prom. Um, they, were, they came here in 1763, before the revolution. Well, in 1763, there was no pro prohibition of slavery in, in any of the colonies. And in fact, slavery existed in most, if not, if not all of the colonies. Uh, so the, the question becomes, where do we get this phrase Mason-Dixon line as referring to the free states and the slave states? And the answer begins here with the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. President Jefferson made this purchase and very soon a question arose, what about slavery in this new region? Uh, it wasn't until 1820 that that got resolved in what's called the Missouri Compromise. This compromise was authored by Henry Clay and it established a line. The key word there is line. Uh, the Missouri Compromise was a line at 36 degrees, 30 minutes. It was an extension, give or take, given some poor surveying of the boundary from below Virginia and below Kentucky. Uh, and it said that no new state or territory north of 36 degrees, 30 minutes can have slavery, with the exception of Missouri, that being the compromise. Uh, after that was established, four years later, and this is the earliest I could find, it may have already been in use before that, I uh, found a reference by John Randolph, congressman from Virginia, which is the earliest reference I could find to the Mason-Dixon line as a line dividing free states from slave states. Randolph said uh, uh, on the floor of Congress, we who belong to that unfortunate portion of the, this confederacy, which is south of Mason and Dixon's line and east of the Allegheny Mountains, have to make up our minds to perish, or we must resort to the measures which we first opposed to British aggression, aggression and usurpations. So it's sort of interesting that as early as 1824, and in fact earlier, already out in the open was the idea of Southern independence from the Union, later came to be called secession. Uh, uh, so it was at that point that we start seeing this shorthand with the Mason-Dixon line. But if you look closely at the map, you'll notice that parts of uh, uh, slaveholding areas east of the Alleghenies are north of the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, at Delaware, it goes up a little above the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, what is now West Virginia, at the time it was still Virginia, has a whole little panhandle sticking up between it and uh, Ohio, north of the line. And you may be able to see, yeah, that New Hampshire, I have kind of a checkerboard color. New Hampshire did not officially abolish slavery until the Civil War. Um, so it's really a, a shorthand that came into our language. But I wanted to talk about it because slavery is one of the two underlying elements that, uh, that I want to follow a bit tonight through the people that, because of slavery, established a great deal of the lines that are on the American map. And also to talk about another underlying element that came to be entwined with slavery, and that is the vision of this man, Thomas Jefferson. In 1784, Congress assigned Thomas Jefferson the, the task of coming up with a way to create new states. It's not in the Constitution, so uh, we needed some kind of method for doing so. This was the uh, proposal for new states that Jefferson handed in. Probably the first thing to strike you is, well, that ain't what we got. Uh, and nor do we keep most of those names, although two of them have kind of survived, Michigania and uh, Illinois. Uh, uh, and, uh, but, but, but Jefferson, what's intriguing to me is that Jefferson had a quest as well. And when he uh, issued this, this report and made this suggestion, uh, he made a statement that, that, that you may not quite follow everything he's suggesting here, and I'll get into that right after. You will hear the quest. You will recognize the quest of Thomas Jefferson. With respect to new states, were the question to stand simply in this form, how may the ultramontane territory, that means the territory west of the Allegheny Mountains, be disposed of so as to produce the greatest and most immediate benefit 
to the inhabitants of the maritime states. Those are these darker green.